So just a disclaimer, this is not a conversation about gardening or horticulture or agriculture. I'm totally unqualified to speak on any of those. I am, however, here to share with you my journey to becoming a good corporate citizen and a great uh, citizen of the world. So I'm going to start in my own backyard. Um, the current owners didn't want me to get any closer than this. But that's where I grew up. And probably like many of you, you had a great backyard. Whether it was a square patch of grass or a corner on the sidewalk, everything happened there. This is where we learned to play. That's children's work, to play. And we learned the dynamics of social interaction and working and playing with each other. We played school, everyone wanted to be the teacher. We played communion. Everyone wanted to be a priest. Never understood that. We made courts with our mother's blankets and we played hopscotch and uh, hen games and it was great fun. Uh, we had a lot of curiosities that we discovered. The physical world as well. We made things out of tree branches, slingshots. We made rosary beads out of china berry tree seeds. There's a theme here, right? But uh, mostly we had fun. We felt safe and secure in our backyard. As time went on, even as a little girl, we were able to leave that backyard. Because of recent laws around integration, we actually got to leave and go downtown. And we discovered that our city, Houston, was a real big city. And our backyard became even bigger. And we had more experiences, we were more sophisticated, our play became more complicated. We rode buses. We went shopping in places we could never have been before. We ate food that we'd never eaten before. But we knew bad things were happening in our backyard as well that we couldn't control. This was the world we knew, the world we experienced. We knew there was a larger world. You knew it too, right? That's what we learned. It was a glow, very bland, very black and white, with texture. We never had family in the old country. We stayed here. We focused on what we knew and what we experienced in our own backyards. So as time went on, you know, it became clear that lots of people were concerned about what happened in their own backyards. All of a sudden, they got much bigger. You know, we knew that things were happening we didn't like. Yeah, we all wanted to fly. We wanted to drive fancy cars, so we need petroleum and chemical plants to make that happen. We wanted to shop. We wanted shopping centers. But guess what? We just didn't want it to happen in our own backyard. Even hospitals or homeless shelters, we knew people needed them. We just didn't want them around us. So what did we do? We moved to our own self-interest. And by doing that, we are neglecting the interconnectedness. That means we ignore each other at our own peril. You know, when I was a little kid, my father decided that our backyard really needed some help. So he brought in a dump truck and he put, you know, cubic yards of topsoil down. But when it rained, as it will do in Houston, Texas, which is below sea level, what happened? Our neighbor's yards all flooded. And it was our fault. My mother was 99 years old, said to me the other day, I still feel bad about what happened to the neighbors. That your father did it. <laughs> and we had a great background. Um, so, we know that when we tackle these questions together, when we pay attention to people who need our help, the mentally ill, our young offenders who are tossed into prisons with no hope, our children who are not learning or not being put in a position to really live their lives and to be the best that they can be, we all suffer. You know, if you don't tend to your garden, you grow weeds instead of flowers. That's my last gardening tip. <laughs> but together we can succeed. And so that is why I'm so committed to global citizenship. You guys are great. We are generous. Americans are great givers. We're only second in the world now behind me and Mars, so watch your back. <laughs> right? We give $358 billion last year. $258 billion came from individuals like you. And where are the best givers? The state of, that's right, Utah. Followed by the District of Columbia. Maryland, 
New York and Wyoming. Thank you. So what are we giving to? Preponderance of our giving is still to religion. And 15% now to education. Growing areas of concern, environment, animals, culture and the arts growing. What's not growing? 4% international. Why, I ask, why? <laughs> I don't understand that. We're totally fascinated by the world around us. Man has always moved around this planet. Look at that. You know, the theory of early man says that Homo sapiens left Africa 50 to 100,000 years ago. And he's still moving. You know, we all want to see the world. Look, we're totally curious about the rest of the world. Look, these all came from my husband's camera. <laughs> he's been everywhere. He thinks the world is a big old Disneyland. <laughs> we want to see the world. Look, we're fascinated by other cultures. How do they wear those wooden shoes? Right? And we should be. However, this curiosity, this fascination does not mean we have become one with the global world, where we are empathetic and we feel joined to it. Right? So I want to make the case that there are many reasons for us to pay attention to what's happening in the world. My own journey became, I was a corporate philanthropist, before that slide. And although we had done great giving programs around this country, helping to improve the lives and living conditions of children in our communities, we noticed one day that half of our income was coming from outside the United States. From outside of the United States. What in the world were we giving to the rest of the world? We embarked upon a journey in partnership with UNICEF, and we saw the world from the favelas of Rio to the slums of Mexico City, we saw that when we partnered and empowered people, it helped them to determine their own lives, get the education they needed to provide their health care, take care of their families, to make a contribution to the world. That's my journey, my beginning of my journey. Um, and then after I graduated from corporate America, I had the privilege of working with U.S. Fund for UNICEF, but where I'm able to see this humanitarian aid in action, and I can't tell you that um, the most fascinating, committed, daring people in the world give their lives so that others in the most remote places with the most difficult to treat conditions can thrive and survive. All right, so the imperative for me, I'm gonna give you, because I used to be a lawyer, maybe four reasons why you should join me on this journey. First, the moral imperative. As human beings, you know, we are only judged by what we give to others, you know. Um, and we can accept that we just have a moral obligation to help our neighbor. To not flood their yards. <laughs> or burn trash and destroy their trees. That's something else he did too. But, um, and the second reason I might give you is for your own self-determination. You know, participating in the global world really helps you actualize who you ought to be as people, who you might want to be, or who you envision yourself to be. When you forego the me or the we, you fill your heart, you fill your soul, you fulfill your destiny. Third, I might appeal to your self-interest because you understand our interconnectedness. You understand that when Ebola hits Liberia and Sierra Leone and Guinea, that it might not stay there. Maybe you have an interest in stopping it at the border. And then four, the slide, because we're all family. Yes, the best thing that ever happened to us, besides sliced bread, was the ability to take our own DNA. All right, so I had an interest in this because I'm adopted. I don't know who my family is, but I accept that I'm a member of the family of man. But this was interesting anyway. Uh, I've got a lot of relatives. Maybe some of you are related to me. Um, we're certainly uh, related to each other, and we have the science to prove it. I'm not alone. There are a lot of people who are related to each other. Because of the way man has explored the planet, he has left his legacy everywhere. So, if you don't buy any of the other three arguments, maybe you want to help out your cousin. 
I don't know. But there are millions of children around the world that need your help. Yes, I know you're going to say we have the same problems here, and you would be right. But we have the resources to make sure that our children aren't hungry at night, that they have quality education, that they have clean water. That we don't do it is a mystery to me. However, we do have a chance to make a difference for millions of children around the world who are looking for hope. They're looking for food. They're looking for nutrition. They're looking for futures. They're looking for help. And they're looking for it from you. They're looking for a future. Today, 16,000 children will die from preventable diseases, including malaria, tetanus, pneumonia. There's no reason for that. Let's help them. Today, 30 million children are on the move throughout the world. 30 million. So we took all the children, California, Florida, Texas, New York, Illinois, and Ohio. 30 million children. Imagine that. Leaving their homes at once. And they're leaving because they're threatened by war and famine, disease, and they're looking for hope. They deserve our help. That was the root. So now what are we battling today? Look at the Zika virus. It knows no borders. It respects no child. Should we wait until it is visited upon our shores? This little mosquito also carries the dengue virus. They pack a lot of punch. But we're all working together to make sure that it doesn't happen if you're self-interested to your family, if you're motivated by humanitarian purposes to other children who clearly may have no future. So, what can you do to bring hope to children around the world, to make sure they eat well, that they have equity, and there's justice and peace in their world? There's lots you can do. So I'm going to give you four things before I leave. One is simply to become educated to embrace the concept of interconnectedness. <clears throat> and you can bring hope to children around the world. The second thing, um, maybe you should educate those around you. Your family, your friends. If you have children, maybe they'll listen to you. There are many resources on the internet and other, in, in other places for you to go to to be educated on what's happening in the world. Your children don't have to get that black and white globe like we did, wondering what's out there for us, wondering what's out there affecting our futures. And in doing so, you are bringing the love that we need for our world to flourish and for us all to be productive and happy in this life. You can also get cash. <laughs> and you can volunteer. I know you guys are great volunteers. This is a, a particularly American culture. Uh, we brought volunteers into the world. We are proud of that. I'm just listing here for you some of the top volunteer activities of people in America. And uh, a lot of it has to do with fundraising, being social entrepreneurs, providing resources for other folks. Um, and the last thing on this continuum is to be an investor. I don't know if you've heard of impact investing, but uh, the fund that I run that you heard in the introduction, what we do is we exist to accelerate resources to UNICEF so that supplies can get to where they need to be to save children's lives as soon as possible. It's a very important mission I'm very proud of. But there are other ways in which you can be an impact investor as well. Think of taking your money to invest in a developing economy which creates self-sufficiency and sustainability for people around the world. And if you're really lucky, you'll get your money back with interest. I don't know who could resist that deal. Doing well and doing good at the same time. So, in conclusion, I know you all know this. We're on one planet. Um, you know, you can't score a touchdown from the parking lot. You can't get a home run from the bleachers, at least not a legal one. <laughs> and you probably won't get a standing ovation for your aria from the balcony. 
So I urge you to forego the me for the we. There's only one planet. It's a big backyard. Thank you.